What matters most to me in life? What would I be willing to fight for? Die for? Samantha was the quintessential party queen. Her entire life revolved around shopping for the latest designer clothes, getting glammed up and hitting the club, bar or whatever shindig took her fancy. When she wasn't out on the town, you'd find her hanging out with friends, watching TV or mindlessly absorbed on social media, trying desperately to satisfy an agonizing boredom. His favorite thing in the world was music. He learned to play the trumpet when he was 11, but Jonathan's job was quite demanding, so he rarely had time to practice his most cherished possession. Every now and again, he would pull out his music box from under the bed, just to remind himself of how good he was. It was full of songs he had written a few years ago that he never did anything with except make a storage box to collect dust. Althea is a fighter. She survived an acrimonious divorce, a heart-wrenching job loss, a traumatic health challenge, and most recently, a move to a brand new city. Life was starting to look good again for Althea, even though she had given up most of her charity and community work. She kind of settled into a safe, sedentary and somewhat bland lifestyle that was comfortable enough, though feelings of selfishness and sloth were always lurking in the background. We fill our lives with gadgets and gear and everything else that keeps us on the go. We overeat, binge on TV and shop till we drop. We're either in a state of total avoidance, neurotic preoccupation, or altogether numbed out. The human mind is always seeking, searching, looking for more and more ways to stimulate and satisfy its sensory desires. We feel safe in our comfort zone and sexy in that red satin dress. We are gods in our convertibles kings in our castles and our Instagram followers are the icing on the cake. We pull and tug trying to fit into smaller sized jeans or something that we're not or just fit with the norms and expectations of society. We communicate in emojis, thumbs up to express and bear our heart and soul in abbreviated text. We spend all our time spending all our money on things that are fleeting and never really keep us filled up. It just leaves us yearning, desperate and programmed to continue the pursuit, fill the void and top up the bottomless pit. Still, we're left empty inside and as hard as we try to fill the hole, we end up unfulfilled. Finding fulfillment is not an external endeavor, but in the journey of learning and growth. It is not found in the fun, fast and easy. It is experience in becoming skillful and mastering your craft. Fulfillment is not sex in the city, it's your technical writing or marketing savvy that distinguishes you above the rest. It's not in transitory pursuits, but in the lifelong commitment you make to improving and bettering your life. It's in the things you value that truly matter and lead with grace and meaning. Fulfillment doesn't live in the comfort zone. It lives in moments of courage and confidence when you step outside and face your adversities, pursue your dreams and express your creativity. If you're looking for fulfillment in elegant words, you'll be sorely disappointed. 
You see, it's a verb found in the doing and embedded in your values and your purpose. As they all come together, you feel alive, invincible, and fulfilled right up to the brim. Fulfillment is not sitting safely at home, neither is it in the familiar. You'll know it as a deep inner gratitude for the opportunity to make a difference in the world. A light that lightens a load for others. You recognize it in your humanity, touching and transforming community. A humble reminder in your heart of the intrinsic connection to something bigger than yourself. So that when you leave this earth, your legacy will inscribe I was here, and your contribution will continue on. Fulfillment is more easily available than you think. It all starts with you. Here are five questions to help you find more fulfillment and be happier in life. What really matters to you in life? What do you value above all else? How could you live these values more on a daily basis? When do you give in instead of standing up for yourself or what's right? Where do you already have everything you need? What makes you feel alive? How could you be or do more of that? Ponder these questions over the week ahead journal around them to go deeper. Sometimes you feel so overwhelmed and consumed by events happening around you that you need to find perspective, an outlet and a healthy way to process what is unfolding. Journaling is a knight in shining armor that provides a safe space to lay your head and a means to garner control. It is an effective self-help tool to help prioritize problems, fears, and concerns. It allows you to step back and assess events objectively and come up with an action plan to counteract overwhelming events and situations that come up in your life. Journaling works well in identifying patterns of negative self-talk and to make sense of thoughts and emotions. You gain a deeper understanding of your priorities, triggers, behaviors, accomplishments, goals, dreams, and pretty much anything and everything else that makes you who you are. Journal regularly. Don't be afraid to lay it all out. Make it matter and make it a fun and consistent practice that you'll discover is a tremendous plus for your mental health and well-being.